You are supremely confident in your faith. You know it is the right one and all others are wrong. You are literally willing to bet your eternal soul on that very fact. And yet, have you ever stopped to consider that there are two dozen major religions and literally thousands of different faiths practiced on this planet? Did you know that within Christianity alone, there are more than 45,000 different denominations, each claiming to understand ultimate truth better than all the others? What if Jehovah's Witnesses are right? What if everything they teach is actually true? You could have a, a very, very well aligned set of morals and be a really, really good person, but you're still going to be massacred when Armageddon comes because you don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. So if the Great Tribulation uh, started tomorrow, if there was, um, if the United Nations banned all organized religion so, and fireballs started to rain down from the sky, selectively killing everybody who wasn't a Jehovah's Witness. Um, I would, with every last ounce of strength in my body, try and keep my family alive. If we were to somehow be killed anyway, regardless of my attempts, that would still be preferable. That would still be preferable to living on a planet where your, your entire existence is to thank and praise a God who has annihilated billions of people for the crime of not wanting to bend their knee to seven blokes in New York. I, I would prefer to not live in that kind of uh, environment. And, you know, I, I, I feel sorry for anyone who would survive into that kind of sickly dystopia because their job, you know, as soon as the fireballs stop, their job is to then start getting rid of the evidence of this global slaughter as our like job for the first years of this paradise is is basically carting around bits of, of flesh, bits of um, mutilated, charred flesh. That's paradise, apparently. Um, no, I, I, I wouldn't want any part of that. It, a, a crime would have been committed. A crime against all conceivable measures of decency and common sense and morality. I won't have any part of a world, that, a, a paradise world that is built on the bones of billions of massacred people. Not gonna do it. It wouldn't be a paradise. In the extremely unlikely scenario that Mormonism turns out to be true, I'd imagine the following conversation taking place at the judgment bar. Why did you make your one and only true church look so much like a clumsy hoax? I used the brain you gave me. I believed you when you said that your glory is intelligence. I believed you when you said let us reason even as a man reasoneth one with another. This is my investigation. This is the evidence I've discovered. This is my reasoning. This is how I arrived at my conclusions. Help me. Where did I go wrong? What could I have done otherwise? Did you really expect me to rip out my guts in preserving some very weak form of faith in light of so much damning evidence to the contrary? Is not faith believing and hoping in things when there is little evidence for or against something? And is not delusion believing and hoping in things when there is an abundance of evidence to the contrary? And if the Mormon God still sees fit to condemn me? Despite having lived an honorable and good life loving others and being a good husband and father? I will gladly go to a lower kingdom than serve and live worlds without end with such a sadistic, unjust, illogical, and unstable God. This God would be acutely aware of my history, of the causal chain of events and experiences that cumulatively contributed to the development of my entire personality. God would understand intimately my reasoning and my thought process, and how I arrived at the conclusions I did. He would know my views on morality and ethics and understand specifically why I think it more virtuous to approach religious claims critically and prudently than to accept them at face value on faith. He would understand why I think that I've lived a good life, why I think that I've made good choices. He would know about the time in my life when I actually picked up a Bible and made it a point to read the whole thing, and he would know the hundreds of verses I came upon which, which I found horrifying 
or absurd, or completely incompatible with the notion that this was inspired by a just and loving being concerned with ensuring our salvation. Of course, this God would know all too well, I took truth very seriously in my life. I never believed anything simply because I wanted it to be true, or because I thought it would be beneficial in some way to assume it was true. And likewise, I never doubted any claim simply because I preferred it not to be true. But I would take comfort in knowing that the being responsible for judging me, for evaluating me, and ultimately deciding my fate, knows me so perfectly that I don't have to make any excuses for myself. The omniscience of this being would allow me to feel perfectly represented. I don't have to plead a case. I don't have to persuade anyone that my intentions were pure. These things are already known to this being. I have a hard time imagining that this God would be offended by me and my thought process. Offended enough to allow for me to endure unbearable torment for all of eternity. And not as a form of discipline or correction or redemption, since it never ends. There's nothing constructive about hell. You don't come out of hell a better person. You don't come out at all. And so the only reason for the existence of such a thing would be vengeance. And in the meantime, you know, extreme rapists and murderers and child molesters are welcomed into heaven with open arms so long as they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior before their demise. And if it turns out that this is the case, then that's okay too, because I, I don't know how I would be able to handle spending eternity alongside a being whose idea of compassion and fairness makes me sick to my stomach. A being whose empathy would be so easily trumped by his vanity. Well, what do you say about that? What if you're wrong? If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Um, I, 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 the big thing is there's, you know, obviously you have a belief and so there's a presumption that there's some uh, risk on my part. Uh, right. From where I sit, I'm risking being wrong about every religion, and you're risking being wrong about every religion except yours. And right. I don't know how much time you've spent worrying about other religions, heavens or hells, um, but I don't think it's probably very high. Any god that wants to uh, condemn me to eternal torment and suffering, um, well, I can't do anything to stop them, but if they're willing to do that, um, knowing who I am and what kind of life I've led and how I honestly followed the evidence. Um, right. As far as I can tell, it's their fault that I don't know they exist. And if they want to punish me for that, then they're a moral thug and I'll be happy to live, you know, in eternal anguish knowing that I'm morally superior to them. Okay, no, I accept, I, I, I accept that. Um, I wouldn't even know what to say to that and I wouldn't want to argue with you, but um, okay. I'm praying for you guys. I, I just hope that, you know, you see the light, at least um, just reconsider maybe at some point. But thank you for I, taking my call. I appreciate it. But what if, what if Muslims are right? And what if Islam is true? He could give us a sign that would convince everyone in this room. And yet he's not going to do it. And hell awaits. And hell awaits our children because we can't help but mislead our children. Okay, now just hold this vision in mind. And, and first appreciate how little sleep you have lost over this possibility. <laughs> what are the chances that we're all going to go to hell for, for eternity because we haven't recognized the Quran to be the perfect word of the creator of the universe? Please know that this is exactly how Christianity appears to someone who's not been indoctrinated by it. What if you're wrong? Well, what if I'm wrong? I mean, anybody could be wrong. We could all be wrong about the flying spaghetti monster and the pink unicorn and the flying teapot. Um, you happen to have been brought up, I would presume, in the Christian faith. You know what it's like not to believe in a particular faith because you're not a Muslim. You're not a Hindu. Why aren't you a Hindu? Because you happen to have been brought up in America, not in India. If you'd been brought up in, Indo in India, you'd be a Hindu. If you were brought up in, in um, Denmark in the time of the Vikings, you'd be believing in Wotan and Thor. 
If you were brought up in, in classical Greece, you'd be believing in, in Zeus. If you were brought up in Central Africa, you'd be believing in the great Juju up the mountain. I mean, there's no particular reason to pick on the Judeo-Christian God in which by the sheerest accident you happen to have been brought up and, and ask me the question, what if I'm wrong? What if you're wrong about the great Juju at the bottom of the sea? You put it to me, what if you're wrong? But what if you're wrong? What if, rather than Jehovah, Allah is the one true God, or Shiva, or Wu-Tan, or some god on the other side of the planet you've never even heard of yet. The truth is, you already know what it's like to be an atheist in regards to every other faith but your own. It's clear to you that adherents to other faiths are mistaken, deluded, or deceived, but they think the same of you. The way you view them is exactly the way they view you. Every devout Hindu has embraced his faith for the exact same reasons you have embraced yours. Yet you do not find his reasons compelling, nor do you lose sleep at night, fearing that if you die, you'll wake up in his hell.